Hello everyone, this is Kathy from The Daily Marker. How are you today? I'm here today to celebrate Concord and Nine's birthday. I want to show you how I stamped this and added some texture. It's not a full card. So I stamped this awesome, gorgeous cake and then I stamped it on some masking paper. So I'm going to take off the back and then I decided I would cut out, I die cut it and then that makes it easier to cut out. And then I just would fussy cut a little bit of the edge. I don't really need to, but I thought it would, I don't know. I just decided to do it. I'm using this um, wand or candle, whatever you want to call it. It's a line that's in the set. And you can actually use this to hold up the banner, but I want to use it as candle. So I thought I'd show you another way to stamp this really cool stamp set this cool cake. I love it, this birthday set. So I there's a, a die cut and I want to, well you'll see, that's what I want to use these candles for. So that's why I'm stamping them and I could have, if I didn't trim this, all I would do where the die cut was is just free hand or use a ruler to draw the line, which I have to do anyway. So you really don't need to fussy cut. Now there's this, um, here's the happy day. And I'm going to color these letters and then stick them on the candles. You could also take a pen. If you don't want to use the die cuts, you could just sketch them on too. So there's a lot of different things you can do with this set. I have a Sharpie fine tip marker and I just want to show you how easy it is. You could die cut the happy day and then just use it like a stencil. So I'm just drawing some candles here just so you can see what I'm talking about. And I'm just going to use the die as a guide to draw the letters. And I could do that on my cake instead of using the die cut. Sometimes I like to have a drawn look, so I just thought I'd share this part super easy and just this set is super versatile. The sparkle which you see on my right by the Hero Arts ink can be used you know like a sparklers sometimes you use sparklers on cakes so you could do that do less and use a sparkler look and use some um, glitter pens or whatever glitter markers now right here I have a trusty ruler, this is from Anthropology, and I'm just drawing some lines. I found my center and I want to draw the base to a cake plate. So this is going to be a really tall card and I'll be sharing this later on my blog uh, later in the week. Today I'll be showing you two other cards made with this exact same stamp set. But I want to show you how easy it is to draw this base to, to make turn this into a cake plate. Super easy. All you need is a good eraser and a pencil and you just I drew some lines first and then I could faintly see them and that's why I was erasing them and then I'll just go over this with the black sharpie. Super easy. You could even trace a coin to get that kind of loosey C shape. Now I'm going over these candles. Um, I'm using this acrylic block as a ruler I'm wiping it off my, with my fingers in case I get any ink on it and then I realize it's not really happening. So these lines can be fattened up or not at all. Now I'm deciding there's so many great sentiments if I want to stamp it on the cake or what I want to do. Um, so now I want to show you I love the bear from Concord and Ninth and I thought it'd be really cool if the bear pops out of the cake. So right now I just want to stamp the bottom part of the cake and this small, as you can see I just did, the small mini ink from Hero Arts. I could really place where I wanted the ink and I didn't have to wipe any off. And then I stamped it on some um, masking paper and I masked that part of the cake off and here's the bear. So I'm figuring out where I want him to go and then I'll stamp the other part of the cake the other half and you'll see this 
you having the right a small little ink pad works good and I want the top of this cake kind of cockeyed like it's heavy and he's trying to lift it so um, super easy I saved my mask I think from before I don't even remember I did this two days ago it's what happens when you get old so I'm just cutting the bottom off and yeah this is what I used before okay so I'm just putting it down it's not super sticky but it's it covers enough now you really want to be careful where you position the bear I want that piece of um, greenery not to fall on the bear so just kind of take your time and do that and super easy ink it up the bear because you've got coverage um, you might I don't know if you know this but if you have a good eraser sometimes if you get a smudge or something on your paper like I always seem to do eraser a lot of the times will get rid of that so here's how it looks after stamping I don't worry if I don't get a full line like you see on that cake that he's popping out of on my left is the card I made before and then here's the two things I'll can't wait to color so I'm just filling those lines in that are faint with my sharpie fine tip marker and by the way I'll list all the supplies in the description that I'm using and I'll have a lot more information on my blog thedailymarker.com so hopefully you'll pop over there there's going to be a giveaway from Concord and 9th and I hope you check it out now I just want to show you how I colored the background and how I did the bear and added some texture um, you might notice that I'm leaving a little bit of an edge around the cake and the bear because I'm just scribble coloring this on I've sped this up very basic and what I'm going to do is use some Copic blending solution and I couldn't find my rag so I ended up grabbing a piece of denim that I had and you'll see that in a minute but right now so anyways when you use the rag or you use something with texture and you, with the various ink it's a clear liquid and just gives you texture I use it all the time it's a great investment um, but when you use it if you use too much it'll bleed into the image which is fine because you can just use a zero and push that color away and if it's a dark color you push it away you let it dry and then you go over it again but if you leave a border you kind of leave a little area for it to bleed in so here's the piece of denim because I couldn't find my rag but I did find it later in the video so you will see the really cool texture that you get with denim if you try different things you get different textures and I like to use my heat gun to dry in between kind of freezes the look rather than it blending out and smoothing out into the paper um, some you want a damp not overly wet uh, when you use the rag or denim or whatever if you saturate it too much then it just kind of blobs on and doesn't give you that texture so I like to dampen it and then dry it in between layers sometimes add more now I'm going to just go ahead and I'll be adding texture to the bear and the cake. Um, when I put the bottle away, I found my rag. You can see it at the top of my, on the right. Um, so I was happy about that. So I'm just using a variety of cool and warm grays to add some color on the bear. I love him. He's so versatile. He has a little sign that says hugs. And then, of course, you can remove that and use it for anything. I made another card. I'm looking um, what well, we we'll use the just the sign, but he's just so versatile. He's a great size. I love that he's a little larger than most images. So I'm just going to finish this up, and um, I always like to add a little bit of color, pink or or orangey pink 
to the belly um, and then I'm just going to blend everything out with this W1 here. Um, what else? Once I finish this, I'm going to add some more various ink. That's what it's called to my rag. And I folded it up to fit on my finger because I didn't want it, that texture to go on the denim texture. And that worked well. Um, my brown was running out, so I just grabbed another brown. I'm not thinking about what brown I want. I just want kind of like a Kit Kat color. I'm thinking this is like a uh, double chocolate cake with a, uh, what is that, red? You guys know it. Darn it. Um, there's that red velvet with the red velvet frosting. Now I've picked up my rag again and I'm adding some texture to the cake. Then I'll add a little bit more color to the, the sides and then later my video shut off and this really wasn't about coloring. I just dotted on some more color to the brown colors in the corners and you'll see that when you at the end of this and when you go to my blog. So just play around with different textures and dotting on more color. I'm re-wetting that rag because it wasn't too wet. And then here I'm just adding some of that dot that I just talked about, dotting on some more color. It kind of blends the two evenly. And there you go. This is what it looks like. Lots of texture. I added glossy accents to the um, red velvet layer and his nose and this other card I'm showing in my blog. So check it out. I hope you like it. Don't forget there's a giveaway and thank you so much for watching and always a thumbs up is appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.